Hello, my beautiful people. This is Anna Sheriff again. So today, I want us to talk more on this caregiver and her individual or the elderly lady she was working with who was spitting on her. You know, most of my friends watch it live on Facebook when she did that Facebook live. They sent that video to me when I saw it. I was out of it. I was so upset. You know, I didn't, I wasn't upset because of this spitting. I was upset because of what the caregiver had done. Because those of us who are working in this occupation, we already know that what she did was wrong. She violated that older woman's privacy. She did. We all know when we see things like that, when someone is spitting on you, immediately people are going to react. And you won't blame people for that. They are going to react. Because we know spitting on someone, it's not good. However, this caregiver knew what she did wasn't right. She was not supposed to record that lady or even put her on social media without her consent or her family consent or the guardian or the, or the, the, the agency she works for. We know working in this particular occupation, video recordings are against the law of someone that you're working with. So, we all saw the video and when you see this particular act, Anybody is bound to react the way social media reacted. But for those of us who have worked in this industry and we continue to work in this particular occupation, we knew what the caregiver did was wrong. It was totally wrong. Because she as a caregiver is a paid employee who is trained to protect the privacy right of her client or individual whoever she's working with but she violated all those rules and these are the reasons why HIPAA was put in place i'm gonna read what HIPAA stands for or what HIPAA was meant to do so HIPAA stands for health insurance portability and accountability act it says the Health Insurance and Portability and Accountability Act of 1996 HIPAA is a federal law that requires the creation of national standards to protect sensitive patients' health information from being disclosed without the patient's consent or knowledge. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, HHS, issued the HIPAA privacy rule to implement the requirement of HIPAA. The HIPAA security rule protects a subset of information covered by the privacy rule. And this statement is um, by the Department of Health and Human Services and the CDC. I got it from their website. You cannot disclose your patient information without their consent. Now we all saw that woman was having a behavioral issue. A behavior issue and the staff knows that so we know and um, uh, we know when working with these individuals when they are having behavior to any behavior there has been an antecedent something must have happened before the behavior took place to those of you who call this lady racist you guys need to understand to every behavior there has to be an antecedent Something must have happened between the caregiver and the staff. So now we need to ask the staff, this particular caregiver, what had happened before the behavior took place. To me, not every black and white issue should be racist. We cannot just see black and white issue and we say, we jump immediately to conclusion and say, it is racist. Because this is what we did to this older lady. People called her names and the, the caregiver who was supposed to advocate for her, exposed her to the whole world. 
and started calling her racist. We, as a general public, do not even know this woman's family background. We do not know her family demographics. We don't know who they are, and we then started calling her racist. Why? Because we know spitting on someone is a disgusting act. However, she was having a behavior. So let us take a look now at another video of this caregiver taking care of this same elderly woman. Now we've seen this video, right? We saw where um, from this lady threw this elderly woman in her bed. And the elderly woman is asking her, are you crazy? She said, I am crazy. Now this is, the first video is the woman spitting on her. And now the second video is her abusing this woman. That is physical abuse. This is what I spoke about in my previous video, the video that I just posted. It is physical abuse. We know that it is physical abuse. Let us take a look at another video. So from the el older lady spitting on her to her abusing the older lady and to her drinking at work. Now we all know we're not supposed to be drinking at work. It doesn't matter which occupation you are in unless you're a bartender, but I don't even think bartenders are supposed to drink at work. But she, Miss Innocent, was drinking, dancing at work with her client, who she claims has Alzheimer's. You see, that is a violation of this woman's right. Why? Because if this woman is not allowed to drink alcohol, those of us who work in this particular occupation knows alcohol and medications can interact. The caregiver should have known that. They interact. She is not supposed to be drinking if she's on psychotropic medications, which if you have Alzheimer's, you, you know, your, your, your psych doctor is going to prescribe something for you that will calm you down when you're having the behaviors. But this caregiver was drinking alcohol at work. If you are drunk, how are you supposed to, or how are you able to provide quality care to your client? You are drunk, the client is drunk. Both of you are going to have a, a, a behaviors. You're going to be upset because now that you, the caregiver, is drunk and this your client needs something, you, you are not able to get up from your bed to go care for this particular client, you're going to get mad. You're going to get agitated. And what did you do? Throw that woman on her bed like you did. You are not supposed to be drinking at work. So those of you who have called this woman racist, now you've seen the videos coming out of her, throwing her individual, uh, her client on the bed like that, that is physical abuse, drinking at work, which when she's not supposed to do, we all know that. What do you have to say now to this elder lady that you have called racist? Of course, spitting on someone is, is disgusting. But we know she says she's worked with this lady for almost five years and such things has never happened because this lady just got diagnosed last year when COVID started. This is what she stated, that she has Alzheimer's. We know to every behavior there has to be an antecedent. Something must have happened before the behavior. Now ask this care lady, caregiver, what had happened between she and the elder lady for this elder lady to start having these behavioral issues. Her responsibility as a mandated reporter was to call her agency and say, this individual's behavior needs has changed. They will keep, they will, the team will come up and, and decide to come up with behavioral plans. 
That's why we get, as caregivers, we get extensive training in behavioral management. We have TOVA, we have behavioral management training, we have MANS training. These are all behavioral trainings that we get, extensive trainings. As caregivers, we are supposed to advocate for our individuals, not to expose them to emotional abuse, because this is what she did to her individual, to her client. She exposed that to the whole world to verbally and emotionally abuse her by calling her a racist. Man, people are not kind on social media. They call this woman all types of names. This is the reason why as caregivers, we need to bring awareness because I've realized uh, uh, in my 21 years working in this particular occupation, I've realized the general public has little or no knowledge of the type of population we work with. We are working with vulnerable individuals. And this lady knows her individual is vulnerable and she went and, 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 and did Facebook Live with her, exposed her to the whole world. She was supposed to be the one advocating for her. Had she seen such videos on social media, she as a caregiver was supposed to advocate for her by defending that video. However, no, she is the one who went and posted the video after abusing the lady. And everybody was saying, oh, she's so resilient. She's so patient. Oh my God, I commend her. Really? Now let us take a look at her. In I can't do that. Because normal. But I just did a video to have my own evidence down. Unfortunately, no. We call program B. And then I lost my phone over there. Only for me to realize, say, after now, I'm in some kind of phone, yeah, yeah. Only for me to realize, say, me, me video, yeah, me, my, obvious friend will say, and I'm what's up with you, and I'm what's up with one, and they say, yeah, almost me, say, wait a minute, or can it, wait a minute, or I wait a and yeah, no, wow, plus some of my nude pictures are, and what, and you know, so, you know, and this thing is so dramatic, I don't know why this particular one, or my capitalized one, nude ones, I think, I've been able to pull a most of them down. I don't know how much more be a me me who yet. Maybe because I'm not a celebrating in the ADI near. You become I, one now. I don't know, but I don't know why people are on this, and I can understand why people are posting. Racism, this. girl. Everybody's calling the white lady a racist. Miss Samo, I didn't. That's why. To gain public empathy. I did not do that for the public, as a matter of fact. I did that for my own evidence. I don't know if that to be asked them. Just in case, just in case, indeed, for your information, a family aware, because one of the videos she said the family was aware. Oh, yeah, when you hear you know, some from the Nimi abuse and the Bunania, and the Banabaha, the video ran back with Shana Madeo. One of the videos was already. See, I didn't do it out of. Um, uh, out of like without their knowledge, let me put it that way. It may sell some more air now with all of you, sir, and our followers. I need to use your platform to tell people to pull the video down. No, lady, you posted it, right now. You posted it, it has gone viral. <laughs> Did you guys hear what she said? She said we should put the video down. She's requesting for everybody to put the video down. My sister, the whole world has that video. No one of us, nobody's going to put it down. We are going to continue to talk about this video. We're going to take it and run with it. And everybody's going to give their opinion as to what you just did. How you have exposed your, your client to the whole world to emotional and verbal abuse. All those abuses are there. People are really not kind to the disabled, nor are they kind to the elderly population. Most people, because we saw the comment on social media when they went ninja on this elderly lady by calling her racist. It is your fault, you caregiver. I don't know your name. That is the reason I'm referring to you as a caregiver. It is your fault by exposing your individual or your client like that. And this is a warning to every caregiver, each and every one of us. Don't try or even attempt to do what this particular caregiver did by recording. 
her client or going Facebook Live with her on social media. And now she's saying she didn't do it for sympathy. Yes, you did. Because you stood there innocently recording this elder lady and you say, how long does it take to make salad? I know for sure 99% of us has been abused as caregivers. But we're not supposed to take it personal. If you cannot handle the job, you have the, the choice to walk away, to quit the job and leave. Because the state that I work in, it's employment at will. They can hire and fire you at any time and you, the caregiver, or the, the, the DSP can, can quit at any time. You have the choice to do so. No one is going to hold you responsible for quitting your job. You can find another job. If you, as a caregiver, Anybody working in this particular occupation knows they cannot handle challenging behaviors. It is your choice to resign the job and find another job. That's what I'm saying. My advice here today, please, when you're working in this particular occupation, when you're working with vulnerable individuals, clients, please be patient. Have some patience. Have some compassion. Have some love in your heart. Or else this is not the right profession for you. If you have the intention of getting upset when you get abused. I worked in a nursing home before as a CNA. You know, sometimes when we go, if you're working in the afternoon, you got to get your individuals up, get them ready, you know. And one day I went to get this, uh, uh, one of my clients up and she didn't want to get up. We all, those of us who are working in nursing home, sometimes it's difficult. This is a challenging occupation that we do, we know that. I went to get her up and she looked at me. She was so mad at me. She, she goes, so that's, I said, I called her name. I said, it's time for you to get up. She, she just let it out. She goes, I don't want to get up. I said, but it's time for you to get up. She goes, you are the most ugliest black bee I've seen in my life. And I just smiled. When she saw that I was, I was smiling, she goes, oh, Hannah, I'm so sorry. These are the type of individuals we're working with. They have good days and they have bad days. We should not take anything personal. But this caregiver took it so personal. And I believe it's because she realized that she has been caught abusing this elderly lady. She didn't know that camera was in there when she was throwing that lady on the, on the bed like that. And now she has to stage a behavioral issue that this woman was going through on Facebook Live. And she claims I didn't do it for sympathy. I don't know why the video went viral. I don't know why people are talking about it. Racism, my sister. Racism. Anybody who sees that video, I was not moved by you and by any means because I've, I'm working in this field. I know those are behaviors. I didn't take it as a racist issue anyway. But the general public who has little knowledge of the type of population we are working in immediately jumped to race. You made it look like it was racist behavior. So don't ask us. You don't know why everybody's talking about it. It's because it's race issue. Uh, you made it look like the white woman is being abusive to the black caregiver. Poor black caregiver. And now we've seen that you were the one abusing this woman. Giving her alcohol when, when she's not supposed to be drinking. If she's on medication, those medications are going to interact with her, with her, with her, with the alcohol. So for our social media uh, our critics, please, when we see videos like that, have some patience, get all your facts together, get more information before you start calling someone a racist. Because we don't know this woman's background, we don't know her, her family demographics, we don't know her family dynamics, we don't even know who she is, but we immediately call her racist. Do you know her? No, we don't. So thank you everybody for watching. Please, I want to thank everyone who has subscribed to my channel, who continues to follow me. Thank you for your support. And those who have not subscribed yet, go to YouTube and subscribe, Hannah Sharif. Follow me Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Now I'm on TikTok. I didn't know I can take my talk to TikTok, but now I'm on TikTok. So please visit that page too.